Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. And so, let's take a quick break from the rise of Jafar to talk about Manan, the god of the sea. Also his uh, demigods, one of whom featured in our story earlier, if you recall. And then finally, his other progeny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That a creature that appeared in the bay during the invasion of the Sorcerer's Islands. Please, tell us more. You've uh, noticed my particular interest in uh, all things divine. No doubt. Ach, we most certainly have. Oh, noble god seeker. Oh, no, 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 no. I am purely eager to learn all I can about these uh, beings that we mere mortals call divine. Oh, really? So you're telling us that you're not in search of a patron to whom to uh, pledge yourself? Yeah, no. Uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, I do not know. Ugh, I'd be wary if that's what you're feeling. The dark gods are ever eager for devotees. But on the flip side of that coin, Master Alchemist, the nobler gods of order and light too need their champions. Or, Heinrich, if you are looking for a uh, happy median, obviously I'd recommend my own patron, Ranald. But uh, that is my own particular predilection, and I do not wish to force my own beliefs on anyone else. In point of fact, nor does Ranald actually want converts. Rather, individuals who find him uh, organically, let us say. However, Cedric, let us not harangue young Heinrich here. Instead, let's speak of manner. For perhaps, O oh noble knight, he is the god you're looking for. Oh, yeah. Do you think so, Master Tavernkeeper? Uh, no. Probably not. But I will leave that to you to decide, Heinrich. <laughs> Manan is the lord of the oceans, he who holds dominion over all who dwell in her depths, and the power of life and death over all who plough her waves. No doubt, Heinrich, as a son of the Empire, like myself, you are at least aware of who Manan is the offspring of. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. He is the son of Tal the god of nature and wild places. He was also uh, born of Rhea, wasn't he? The goddess of fertility and family. Ah, indeed. I could not have put it better myself. But despite this land-loving lineage, he is a nautical god, and oft at odds with the other deities of man. Even in his youth, when the world too was young, he caused strife. Most well known is perhaps this. Oh, I feel a story coming on. <laughs> you are not deceived, O oh noble knight. Well, let me begin. Before the coming of the old ones. Blessed be their names. Ah, indeed, indeed. All right. What time is it? Interrupt o'clock. Anyway, before their coming, the world was covered in ice and snow. When they moved it closer to our sun, Sol, the ice began to thaw, and the oceans began to fill, threatening to engulf all the lands. 
this prospect led Manon to declare himself even greater than his father, Tal, and his uncle, Ulrich. The god of winter, war, and wolves, master alchemist. Ach, thank you very much there, Heinrich. must count myself blessed to have such fine tutors as you two. Ah, indeed. Thank you. Anyway, as the level of the oceans rose, it was Ulrich's realms that were worst affected, with the lowlands disappearing beneath the waves, and the highlands thawing. It is said that Manan's mother, Rhea, heard tell of what her son had said, and, in response, raised up the hills and mountains to tower over the encroaching oceans, forcing her son to repent his arrogant boast. Ach, but was not the raising of the oceans and breaking up of the great landmass the work of the old ones? Ah, well, to be perfectly honest, probably yes. But we are talking myths here, and many a myth does not hold up well to the light of close inspection. Nor should they, for what they try to convey is not literal truth. Rather, it is a deeper truth on the underlying nature of gods and men, without muddying the message with wordy, opaque explanation, much as I'm doing right now. And something one of my old shipmates, old Pietra, of chastised me for. Shh. Too many words. Words are silver, but silence is gold. Myths present truth in a form that even a youthful, nascent mind can imbibe. Dissection and analysis are the playthings of uh, stodgier brains. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I think that my uh, stodgy mind may be a little out of its depths here. <laughs> Don't worry is basically what I'm saying. Don't worry if it's true or not. Concern yourself only with the fact it is believed by some, and thus cannot be wholly ignored. Oh, yeah. Well, in that case, I think I see. Hmm, well, anyway. Manan himself certainly does exist, irrespective of his origins, and is worshipped. Although, perhaps a better term would be feared, for I'd put good money on the fact that there is no mariner worth his salt who does not give homage to Manan, up to and including my humble self. But it is not out of admiration, it is primarily out of fear, for it is Manan who controls the tides and currents of the oceans, and his moods are as capricious and unknowable as the sea herself. The risk, the risk is simply too great to not pay at least lip service to him. To incur the wrath of Manan by knowingly ignoring, or worse still, cursing him, will undoubtedly lead to a terrible fate. Be that your ship falling foul of a storm that strikes out of nowhere, or being born upon dire undercurrents and then smashed upon the rocks of some dread coastline, or scuttled on a jagged, shark-infested reef within sight of land, or, worst of all, meeting your end in the deep ocean within the maw of one of his executioners, the Krakens. And I'm not talking about the rum of the same name, Neophyte Renatus, which is of course delicious, and I can see why it is your favourite. No, I am referring to the terror from the deep. Below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath in the abysmal sea, his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep, the kraken sleepeth. 
faintest sunlights flee about his shadowy sides. Above him swell huge sponges of millennial growth and height, and far away into the sickly light from many a wondrous grot and secret cell. Unnumbered and enormous polypi, winnow with giant arms the slumbering green. There hath he lain for ages and will lie, battening upon huge sea worms in his sleep, until the latter fire shall heat the deep. Then once by man and angels to be seen, in roaring he shall rise, and on the surface die. And death is ever close at hand for those who are not God-fearing seamen, and all the ways by which you might anger Manon, for there are many, are not always obvious. For example, it is forbidden to kill the albatross, for these birds are sacred to him, as they are said to carry the souls of sailors lost at sea to safer moorings. Dolphins, too, are not to be killed, for they are the messengers of Manan, and will come to the aid of the faithful when they are in need. Well, just as long as you're uh, at sea, that is. Don't expect a pod of dolphins to come help you when you're in a tavern brawl in port. Ugh, although if they tried, it'd certainly be distracting enough for you to make a sharp exit. Oh, them flippers, flapping and slapping about and whatnot. Ha ha ha, that it would. But, that said, there have certainly been true tales of dolphins lending their aid to those who've either gone overboard or been shipwrecked. And, of course, there is the famous tale of Jack of the Sea and the Circle of Dolphins. Ach, I've not heard of that. What was that then? Ah, well, let me just uh, wet my palate first, and then I'll tell all. Apprentice Morelli, fetch the rum. <laughs> <laughs> 